I've long admired how some of the early synth pop albums were made, especially considering the limitations of the time. So I thought I'd try and recreate some of them using a single synth. Now, the reason for using a single synth is to perhaps to create some limitation for myself, but I also think it's going to show the variety of sounds each synth can produce. In this video, I'm going to delve into one of my favorite tracks, Tora 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 from Depeche Mode's 1981 album, Speak and Spell. To begin, let's consider the instruments used. It's well documented from early interviews and some of the books that have been written that Martin had a Yamaha CS5, Vince used a Kawai 100FS, and Fletch had a Moog Prodigy. Dave's job on stage, apart from singing, was to press play and set the pattern and tempo on the drum machine, although a lot of the percussion and drums on this album actually came from the synths. We also know Daniel Miller, their producer and founder of Mute Records, had an ARP 2600, which he'd bought secondhand after it had been used on an Elton John tour. He also had the ARP 1601 sequencer, which was the only sequencer used on this record. It's worth noting the challenges they faced. This was before the era of MIDI and tape synchronisation, which made running multiple sequence synths and drum machines together almost an impossible task. There are also inconsistencies between American and Japanese CV and gate standards. Typically, the US synths of ARP and Moog use one volt per octave, and some Japanese manufacturers, including Yamaha, used hertz per volt. Nevertheless, they had their tricks, and one such trick was to record a hot signal or pulse to tape. This could have been either from the 2600 itself or even the signal from the gate out of the 1601 sequencer which when played back from tape could be used to reclock the sequences trigger in. In interviews with John Fryer, the recording engineer on that record, he revealed that many synth lines were actually performed live and recorded alongside the sequence parts which had already been recorded to tape. So as an owner of a 2600 and an Antonis stepbrother sequencer, which is a recreation of the original 1601 sequencer, I'll walk you through how I've recreated this track. To start, the song has a short, squelchy percussion noise and a three note chord. As the synths were all monophonic, the chord was almost certainly from the 2600. So I used Melodyne to analyse from the original track which notes were being played. So these were F, A and C sharp. I then tuned each oscillator to these notes and played a single note. The kick and the tom sounds definitely came from the 2600. And here's how I programmed the kick with the sequencer. Again, from a lot of the books that were written, they did use the Korg KR55 drum machine, particularly for the snare sounds, which were used a lot on this album. I have a sample of this, so I've kind of used that one, and I think it sounds pretty accurate to, to the original. The initial bass sound likely be from the 2600 or the Moog Prodigy, with some PWN. So here's how I built the remainder of the track. I've recorded each track into Ableton and added some EQ, a bit of compression and reverb here and there. track. <laughs> 